Hi guys, in this video we're going to take a look at introduction to mutually exclusive events, probabilities of mutually exclusive events, complementary events, examples, and then we'll finish with a summary. So what exactly are mutually exclusive events? Let's say that a meteorologist wants to predict how likely it is to rain or snow at noon on a given day. Now we have already seen that we can calculate probabilities of individual events. So given some information, we could calculate the probability that it rains at noon on Monday, a given day. And similarly, given some information, we can calculate the probability that it snows. And again, at noon on a given day, say Monday. Now, since it can only either rain or snow at a given place at a given time, we can class them as mutually exclusive events. This is because it can only rain or snow, not both. The properties of mutually exclusive events could help the meteorologist to make his prediction. So how can we calculate the probabilities of mutually exclusive events? Events with no outcomes in common are called mutually exclusive, i.e. events A and B are mutually exclusive if it is impossible for both of them to occur at the same time. Equivalently, events A and B are mutually exclusive if the following occurs. The probability of the event A and the event B occurring is precisely zero. Again, it is impossible for both of them to occur at the same time. The probabilities of mutually exclusive events can be added. If events A and B are mutually exclusive, then the following probability formula holds. The probability of the event A or the event B occurring is equal to the probability of event A occurring and then you plus the probability of event B occurring, i.e. they can just be simply added if they are mutually exclusive. For example, let A be the event of rolling a 5 and B be the event of rolling a 6 on a single die. In this case, this is event A and this is event B. Now, it is not possible to roll both a 5 and a 6 on a single die, i.e. the probability of event A and simultaneously event B occurring is precisely 0. And that means that hence A and B are mutually exclusive events. The probability of having just event A is going to be precisely one sixth. This is because again, A is the event of having a five being rolled on a single die, and there are six different options, so getting a five has probability one sixth. And similarly, the probability of event B occurring is also a sixth for the same exact reason. Now, if we think about the probability of A or B, and again, we're not going to use our earlier formula because we're going to be verifying it. A or B is the probability of having a 5 or a 6. And there we have two outcomes of a given six outcomes. And therefore, by using our equally likely outcomes formula, this is 2, which is our event we're considering, the event A or B, divided by 6, which is the number of outcomes in our sample space. And when we cancel, this is 1 third. And again, that means that the probability of A or B is indeed equal to the probability of A and then plus the probability of B. This is because clearly 1 sixth plus 1 sixth is 2 sixths, and again, that's 1 third. And therefore, we have verified the mutually exclusive formula in this case. Now, suppose that A instead is the event of rolling an even number and B is the event of rolling a prime number on a single die. So again, in this case, we're going to have that 
A is the event of rolling a 2, a 4 or a 6, i.e. the even numbers, and B is the event of rolling a 2, a 3 or a 5, i.e. the prime numbers. Now in this case it is possible to roll both an even number and a prime number on a single die by rolling a 2. Again, that is because 2 occurs in both of the situations or events A and B. And therefore, the probability of event A and event B is going to be 1 sixth, because again, we can roll a 2. And therefore, since this is not 0, we are able to conclude that hence A and B are not mutually exclusive events because we need the probability of A and B to be zero for them to be mutually exclusive. And in this case, it is not. And we can illustrate this further by looking at the probability of A, which again, in this case, is clearly going to be one half because we have three of the outcomes, the three even numbers, and we have six total outcomes, which are the six sample space elements, one, two, three, four, five, six. And when you use the equally likely outcomes formula, you get one half. And for the exact same reason, the probability of the event B occurring, because there are three elements that are prime, i.e. 2, 3, and 5, this is also going to be one half. And then when we look at the probability of the event A or the event B occurring, if we have a look at our elements, we have the elements 2, 4, 6, and 2, 3, and 5. Now, 2 is repeated, so we have the elements 2 here, we have 3 in the B, we have 4 in A, we have 5 in B, and we have 6 in A. So we have all of the elements except 1 in either A or B. So therefore, the probability of A or B occurring is going to be the 5 elements that we have divided by the 6 total elements that are available, i.e. including the 1. Now, if these events were to be mutually exclusive, by the above, we could add them up and get the probability of A or B. But in this case, this is not the adding up because that would be 1. 1 half plus 1 half is 1. And 5 6 is not the same as 1. So again, to be ultimately clear, the probability of A or B is in this case not equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B. And again, that is one because they're not mutually exclusive and two by calculation. So what exactly are complementary events? An important example of mutually exclusive events is an event and its complement. The complement of an event A is the event that A does not occur, and is written as not A, A with a dash, or A with a little c. Both an event and its complement cannot happen at the same time. Consider the event that it rains, and the event that it does not rain. These could not simultaneously occur. Since an event or its complement must happen, the sum of their probabilities is 1. The probability of A plus the probability of its complement is equal to 1. For example, let A be the event that a prime is not rolled on a fair die. So A is the event that a prime is not rolled. Then the event A complement is the event that a prime is rolled. Using the above formula, the probability of A is equal to 1 minus the probability of A complement. This is equal to 1 minus the probability of getting a 2, a 3, or a 5. And this is because A complement corresponds to a prime being rolled and the only primes that a fair die can show are 2, 3, or 5. Using equally likely outcomes, this is going to be 1 minus 1 half, because there are 3 outcomes here out of 6. Therefore, we get that the probability of A is going to be just 1 half. 
notice that we can get the same result when just working with the elements of A directly. Recall that A is defined as being a prime not being rolled, and therefore we are looking at the set 1, 4 and 6, the non-primes. And again, using equally likely outcomes, the probability of A is going to be equal to 3 over 6, and this is again 1 half as before. And so we get the same answer either way. Let's take a look at some examples. Our first example tells us that two fair dice are rolled. Show that the events, the sum of the scores on the dice is 6, and both dice land on the same number, are not mutually exclusive. Our first step is to define the events. We can let the event A be the event that the sum of the scores is 6. And similarly, we can let the event B be the event that both dice show the same number. Our second step is to list the outcomes associated with each event. So we have the event A and the event B. For A, recall that the sum of the scores has to be 6, and so we're going to have 1, 5, or 2, 4, or 3, 3, or 4, 2, the other way around, or 5, 1, the other way around. For B, this is the event that both dice show the same number, and so we have 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5, and finally 6, 6. Our third step is to deduce whether or not the probability of both events occurring is 0. This is the condition for mutual exclusivity. Notice that both events have a common outcome, and this is 3, 3. And therefore, it must be possible for A and B to both simultaneously occur, because if two three are rolled, then A and B do indeed occur. So the probability of A and B is not zero. Our last step is to state our conclusion clearly. By the above, A and B are not mutually exclusive. Because to be mutually exclusive, you have to have the probability of A and B being zero. Our second example tells us that a single fair die is rolled. We are asked, are the events rolling a square number and rolling a prime number mutually exclusive? And we are asked to find the probability that at least one of the events occurs. Our first step is to define the events. We can let A be the event of rolling a square and B be the event of rolling a prime. Our second step is to list the outcomes associated with each event. The outcomes associated with A are precisely 1 and 4. Similarly, with B, we can have 2, 3 and 5. Our third step is to deduce whether or not the probability of both events occurring is 0. Here, there are no shared outcomes. And therefore, indeed, the probability of A and B occurring simultaneously is zero. Our fourth step is to state our conclusion clearly. The events A and B are indeed mutually exclusive. Our fifth step is to recall the addition formula for mutually exclusive events. Recall that if events are mutually exclusive, the probability of A or B is the probability of A plus the probability of B. Our sixth step is to use our conclusion to find the probability that at least one of the events occurs. Since we are looking for the probability that at least one of the events occurs, we are looking for the probability of A or B. And therefore, as above, it suffices to find the probability of A and the probability of B. Firstly, the probability of A can be simply found using the equally likely outcomes formula. A has two outcomes associated with it, 1 and 4, and so we have 2 over 6, 
which is one third. Similarly, the probability of B, because B has three outcomes associated with it, is going to be three over six, which is one half. Therefore, by the above formula, the probability of A or B is going to be the sum of these two probabilities. So we have one third plus one half, and this gives us our final answer as five sixths. Our last example tells us that events A and B are mutually exclusive with the probability of A equals 5 twelfths and the probability of B equals 1 quarter. And we are asked to find the probability of neither A nor B. Our first step is to rewrite neither A nor B in terms of complementary notation. The event that neither A nor B occurs is the same as the event a or B, but then all complement it. And therefore, we are looking for the probability of A or B all complemented. Our second step is to recall the addition formula for mutually exclusive events. We have the probability of A and B are mutually exclusive. The probability of A or B is equal to the sum of the probability of A and the probability of B. Our third step is to calculate the probability of A or B using the addition formula. We have been given in the question that the probability of A is 5 twelfths and the probability of B is 1 quarter. And so we can calculate the probability of A or B using the above formula. This is going to be 5 twelfths plus 1 quarter. And this gives us 2 thirds. Our fourth step is to recall the sum of complementary events formula. In this context, the probability of A or B plus the probability of A or B complement must be equal to 1. All we have done is to use A or B as a single event. Our fifth step is to rewrite P of neither A nor B in terms of P, A or B, using the sum of complementary events formula. As we saw above, the probability of neither A nor B is the same as the probability of A or B all complemented. And then using the above, this is the same as 1 minus the probability of A or B. And now this is useful because we know the probability of A or B by calculating it above. And so our last step is to calculate the required probability. We have that the probability of neither A nor B is going to be 1 minus 2 thirds from our calculation above. And this of course is 1 third, which is our final answer. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level math resource, Join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snappify smiley face and together let's make A-level maths a walk in the park.